you want to go with a certain mission. You don't ever want to handcuff yourself into thinking that you're going to do one thing the whole day and do it well. But running the football is something that you always try to do well, and this day in particular. Well, we wanted to make sure we could run the ball. If we're going to be contenders, we're going to have to run the football. There'll be crucial times in big games where you're going to have to control the tempo of the game with your run. So we wanted to make sure we did that. And uh, but also, we've got to throw it to be champions. Mm -hmm. You go to Memorial Stadium here, you bring the troops out. As we mentioned before, wearing the white, guys on the road. Simplify things maybe a little bit when you get away from the home. Nothing too cute, just some power football. Well, you know, there was one uh, special weapon. Fred Puggish Sr. talked to our guys. He was our honorary captain and, and uh, talked to him about the honor and the privilege of playing at Ohio State. And we came out of the gates running the football. There you see Lydell Ross and coming off the left side there. And the Good looking play. I know Fred Puggett Sr. is a fan of power football. He's used to stopping it defensively, but uh, the Bucks would not be stopped on this first drive of the day. Big third down conversion there from Craig Krenzel to Mike Jenkins. Pickup of 12 yards on that, and then you go back to the running game with Lydell Ross. Again, Lydell, um, you know, he likes that stadium. Someone was mentioning earlier, he's had two monster games there, and, and this was certainly one of them. He has at that. Now Ross again, this time, breaks a couple tackles, and he's in for the first score of the day. Well, that was good to see. He appeared to be healthy, uh, and when Lydell's healthy and ready to go, and those guys up front are open the holes, he can be a good one. 11 yards on the pickup. Now we go to the Buck ID and Fred Puggage Jr. Well, I'll tell you what, that to me looked a little bit like a fumble, but sure uh, looked a lot like it. He, he was on the spot, and, and uh, I think Freddie played a darn good game. Loss of eight on the play. Back to offense. Drew Carter makes the catch for the first down. Nine yards on the pickup. Drive stalls, though. Back to the punt here. And good special teams play. You get this one down inside the five. This was a great job. I think it was Stephen Moore down there making sure that it didn't go in the end zone. And, and uh, that's a tough place for their offense to start against the Ohio State defense. Certainly is, and they would have to punt. Didn't get much out of that. You start at midfield here, Lydell Ross, good field position. 30 yards for number 30. Shane Olivier and Alex Stepanovich over there on the right side. Adrian Clark was pulling and uh, good execution. Man, some big holes out there as well. Back to the IU offense. Here you see against their zone play, we were bringing linebackers. This time it was Mike DeAndrea. Last time it was Freddie Puggage, putting a lot of pressure on him. Here this they're time, yeah. throwing a little screen route, and uh, we had some guys there. You see Will Allen and Simon Frazier and Bobby Carpenter and Quinn Pitcock. Uh, our guys love to run to the ball. Yeah, pickup of just three. You saw Frazier chase the quarterback, and then he runs down the screen play as well. And it is a 7 nothing lead at the end of the first quarter, but we start with the second play of the second quarter. This was a big play, a, a deep one out there to Drew Carter, and, and he came up with the big catch, and we were in kind of a power formation, and uh, it was one-on-one, -on -one and Drew Carter beat him. 49 yards on the pickup. Lydell Ross from two yards out, untouched. Good job keeping his shoulder square, and he was able to make the cut back, and uh, good to see him get in the end zone for the second time. A bunch of carries for Lydell Ross here in the first half so far, and back to defense, and back to Simon Frazier. Simon Frazier, Tim Anderson, uh, lots of pressure. Now, they said that his progress was stopped there. It looked like he had, again, let the ball loose. There you see Will Smith and Rob Reynolds and stopped his progress again. Huge sack, Will Smith in there. Loss of nine on two consecutive plays there. Move back to offense and a pickup for Drew Carter on a second and seven play, 17 yards. And this is one that uh, Buckeye fans will uh, cringe yeah, at. That was, a, that was a tough one that Drew hurt his knee and it just breaks your heart because he's having a tremendous senior year and we hope that, we hope that it's better than, than uh, expected. Bam Childress on the little uh, screen route to the wide out and uh, converts the first down. 12 yards on the pickup. Bam always having a good time out there on the field. You see Craig Krenzel going to his check down receiver. You see Brandon Joe uh, picked up about 18. And, and it's good to see Brandon getting healthy. We need him to step in and, and help us down the stretch here. 18 yards, breaks a tackle, gets the first down on the play as well. And, and what a great weapon out of the backfield when you can check down and find Brandon Joe like that. Here again with good pass protection. Craig's got all day. And again, he finds the check down. He, he finds Lydell Ross, who does a nice job receiving the ball and moving it up into scoring position. That's a 17 yard field or a 17 yard completion that sets up a 35 yard field goal. But Mike Nugent don't see that very often. No, and, and really it was a little bit of the mechanics of the snap and the hold, quite honestly. And, and uh, everything's got to be perfect. Uh, there you see Dante Whitner coming up with the big interception right before the half, and it gave us a chance to 
see if we could go strike a little bit. This sets up a fourth and two here. Find Bam Childress. It's at a time in the first half where you can do something like this. 16 yards on the play. Bam uh, came across there. We had Mike Jenkins coming under. Craig found the right guy, and here he finds Santonio Holmes, and Santonio's got pretty good burst, and uh, I was trying to move it up for a field goal position, and those guys went ahead and scored a touchdown, and it was good to see him uh, take care of that right before the half. Yeah, and you really forget about the uh, the two-minute drill. That was the one-minute drill there, and the guys take it in and, and take a 21 to nothing lead. Uh, you rack up 330 total yards in the first half. That's only 15 shy of what your best is in a single game for a game this season. So that's a pretty nice offensive output. You know, it really was. We made some plays, uh, run and pass. Uh, we had good balance, and when you're balanced, I think you have a chance to, to rack it up. Um, you know, we felt like we could come in and, and mix it up a little bit, and if we could just get our running game going a little bit, uh, you know, we'll have a chance to improve a lot. I had to feel like that uh, there was a couple more scores left out there on the field as well, and that's what the second half is for on Buckeye Football Weekly. The numbers look good for Ohio State, up 21 to nothing, big numbers offensively, and I know you have to temper the enthusiasm a little bit because of turnovers and some penalties as well out there because you, you did leave some in the bag. Well, we really did. Uh, you know, we've got to get to the point where the turnovers are the most important thing and the penalties against teams that are going to be hard-fought battles, you're not going to be able to survive those penalties. We have to make sure those don't happen anymore and do some of the things that we did so well in the Indiana game. Let's go to the second half. You start off, you had the ball to start the game, scored on your first drive, so Indiana will come out and have the ball to start the second half of this game. They promptly give it up to Ohio State, and you start on offense and on the ground again with Lydell Ross. Again, Lydell kept his shoulders real square and could go where the openings were, and they over-pursued a little bit on us, and, and uh, Lydell made him pay for it. We saw Drew Carter go down in the first half, so you're going to need plays like this and receivers like this. Santonio Holmes stepping up, making the grab here off the Craig Krenzel toss. Yeah, big play and, and really great protection for Craig to be able to stand and run around like that. Uh, good to see Santonio hand it to the official. 39 yards on the pickup, and then Craig flushed out of the pocket and laid over the middle. Can't do it. You know, it, it uh, it's one of those those truisms that you can't throw it late over the middle and, and uh, you know we survived one more uh, learning lesson of that but I'm not sure we would survive any more of them this season. You had him pinned deep there ended up punting and getting the ball back and Ross picks up nine yards. Again nice little cut back and, and then Craig goes back to Lydell again and he's doing a good job picking and choosing his holes keeping his shoulders square and those guys are knocking him off up front. Six yards on the pickup then you flash it out to this guy. We haven't seen this guy in a while. No, this guy goes fast. <laughs> Chris Gamble. 22 yards in 1.3 seconds. It was, <laughs> it was a quick gainer. I like it a lot. And uh, the very next play, Lionel Ross is in for the touchdown. Good job getting in there. You could tell he wanted to be there. And uh, I heard the kids say that Lydell had a hat trick. He had three, yeah, he three did. This, this weekend. Three TDs, a 28 to nothing lead, and the defense keeps coming. A.J. Hawk leading the way. Tim Anderson there and Quinn Pickcock. And, you know, the offense had a lot of highlights, but the defense gave them the ball a ton of times. And, and uh, the team that dominated this game was the Ohio State defense. Certainly, as we head towards the fourth quarter of play, and you know, Indiana forced into plays like this and defense again there. Well, they were there, and I'll tell you what, this, this punter got hit. I mean, he got, it was a pop, and uh, fortunately he's okay, and our guys did a great job pursuing Scott McMullen in the game, and Scott was five for five, laid it over the middle there, and, and Santonio relaxed a little bit, and, you know, young players have to understand that uh, if the play's not over till you hand the ball to the official. He understood that. He talked about it after the game, and he would get a chance to redeem himself a little later. But Will Smith, relentless D. Will Smith is a tough guy to block there. You see Fred Pugich and Tim Anderson and uh, that defense. If they'll keep getting better, uh, we've got a chance. Nine-yard loss on the play. Goes back to the offense and goes back to Holmes again. 11 yards complete. Good throw by Scott. He was 5 for 5 for 111 yards. And, and here he goes back at it again. And, he finds Roy Hall. It was good to see Roy get in there. That was a third down conversion, uh, which was big, and he hands it to the official. And yep. uh, here we come back. A little uh, boot pass and great protection. And Scott finds Santonio, and, and uh, that's a big play. This time he does it. First and 10 from the 47 yard line. 47 yard touchdown. It's 35 to nothing, Ohio State. 
And then the defense is going to try to wrap this up. You got the goose egg on the board, so you really want to keep it there. Yeah, you really do. And, and to Indiana's credit, they moved the ball down and made some big plays, and, and uh, their quarterback did a good job of keeping things alive there. Quinn Pitcock and Jay Richardson flushing them out on that particular play. Here, uh, put great pressure on them, and they set up the screen. Good call against that particular defense, and uh, to Indiana's credit, uh, they didn't quit playing. Second and six from the 17 goes in for the touchdown. Missed extra point, though. 35 to six the count, and Ira Guilford, the running back of choice here. I thought Ira came in and ran good and hard, and, and again, we've got to get everyone to full strength. So you see Justin Zwick getting the first down uh, on the quarterback sneak. Uh, you know, we've got to have everyone ready to go because when you travel to State College, Pennsylvania, it's a challenge. Well, that's the one that is up next. We'll wrap up some thoughts on this game right now. How do you, how do you handle the, the mismatching experience? Where are the best places to exploit it? Because you've got 24 seniors versus seven seniors in the IU program. Well, you know, I think it was a lot of game experience and a lot of strength, and, and especially the mismatch in my mind a little bit was up front on our defense and their offensive line, and they've got young kids playing, and uh, we felt that uh, we had a pretty good opportunity to match up well with our O-line and their D-line, and, and uh, you know, if, if we didn't turn the football over and have some penalties, it really would have been a clean win, but you know, got more things to work on. And that matchup uh, in the trenches there, you talk um, specifically about breaking down how they're going to try to attack you offensively and what your defense likes to do. You know, they're, they're not a zone blocking team and you guys love to get in the backfield quickly. Well, you know, that was, uh, they're trying to establish their program with the run, mm -hmm. which is, I think, the way that you should do it. Uh, but it's tough to do it against the Ohio State defense. Mm -hmm. And especially when the Ohio State offense is striking after every time the defense stops it. So, they got behind the eight ball fast, uh, but uh, you know they seem to be doing things well and doing things right, and, and I think you'll see Indiana coming along. Let's take a break for a couple minutes. We'll get a couple of Buckeye profiles in, and we'll be back after this.